welcome back to my channel. You are watching Polly's Paper Studio and I am Ginny wishing everyone a very happy Friday. Just want to let everyone know before we get started that we will be changing our upload schedule to Wednesday and Friday just to work a little bit better with our schedule because Summer Ginny is not quite as motivated to get work done as regular Ginny and in fact Summer Ginny didn't even bother to fix her chipped nail polish today. So we are just embracing our flaws and being perfectly imperfect and enjoying crafting anyway. So I want to share with you this beautiful card that I created with a hot buy paper pad. It's called Craft Essentials and it's just a really fun collection of prints and patterns and tags on a craft paper background. So this is going to be a trifold card with lots of paper layering and it was a lot of fun to make. So stick with me and we'll make this together. So the inspiration for this card is this craft paper hot buy pad. So I would typically probably pass this up uh, for some brighter colors or something more vintagey, but this really called to me when I went, I think it was Michael's, um, and I really liked that they had a good assortment of patterns, not just craft paper. So there's different um, tones and different shades and different size prints. So I knew I would be able to stack up these patterns and make my traditional um, card arrangements with it and it would still look like nice layers and not just one big blob of craft paper. There's quite a lot in here and I think that the paper is pretty thick for a hot buy pad and even if you don't like the pattern that's on top, which I like most of them, you're still going to have the craft paper on the background. So I think you're going to be able to use every last scrap of this paper pad and there are a lot of good patterns. Some have the craft with white print. I was kind of drawn more to the darker shades because it seemed like there was more contrast. So I'm going to enjoy using this. And there was a couple of different sheets of cut aparts too. So if you want to add a sentiment or uh, put some journaling in a mini album or something like that, definitely have a lot of opportunities to layer these up. So I'm going to show you how I create the base for this trifold card. So the finished project is going to be four and a half by seven and a half. And because of that, I did need two sheets of paper to get it wide enough. I chose one sheet of 110 pound card stock. I'm gonna cut that to be seven by nine and a quarter. So I'm gonna come in and score it at four and a half and then also at four and three quarters. So when it folds up, I will get the finish size of four and a half by seven and a half. And my left hand side will have a spine of a quarter inch. And you definitely need that to accommodate the bulk of all the things I'm putting inside. Okay, here is the right hand side. So this would be the right hand flip to open the trifold. And I chose 65 pound weight card stock for this specifically because I wanted to not increase the bulk of what I'm putting inside so that it would fold properly. And additionally, I wanted to score this side and have one eighth of an inch. So I have a lot more luck scoring that fine of a spine with the thinner paper. So this is 65 pound weight, so it's still good and sturdy, but not quite as thick as the outside. So this one I scored at uh, four and a half and then they added an eighth of an inch. So each side is four and a half, and then this side is a little bit less narrow, half as much as on the left-hand side. So I just put my double-sided adhesive tape on there, and I think it's easiest to line it up from the outside, because this is where it will be most noticeable if you don't get it quite on correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press that seam on the side so that I can get it measured right up to the edge and that way everything will be nice and square and even. So now I have a trifold and the outside is nice and sturdy and I can begin to add my pattern paper layers. So of course I want to start with the back and that just makes it easier than trying to add this while all the lumpy bumpy pieces 
are on the front and I just cut these with my regular borders. I like the solid black cardstock to go with the print on the craft and I think it really nice and I think it really looks good. It pops off of the white background. I tried it with craft as well, but I thought it kind of was a little too blendy for me. So I'm just gonna flip this over now so that I can get all the inside in. Now, what I like to do is at least have two that match so that they kind of work together. So I'm gonna add this. It kind of looks like a plus sign and it's just a very small pattern. I'm putting it here. On the left. I had a struggle while I was working along. My inner crafter kept wanting me to include pockets or um, tuck spots so we could put in tags and uh, pictures and I was just like, no Jenny, why are you like that? It's a card. It doesn't need pockets. But um, if you wanted to adapt this to a, a trifold mini album or a flip book, definitely could put that in. I would just account for the extra paper layers in the spine so that you have enough room to accommodate all that bulk. So here's my center piece and then my last piece and then my last piece is going to match the left hand side. Like I said I think it will be easier to get this lined up from this outside edge. So I'm just going to add that we are really going to have a very nice, thick, sturdy card when we're done because of all these paper layers. So what I want to do, because um, this will be the center portion in the back, is add a section for sentiment to be added. So I just like to have a nice little uh, die cut shape here. Gives it a little bit of extra detail and it's much easier to see writing on that light colored background. So here is the inside of all my flips. So this one will be what shows first. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that diagonal stripe again. I think this is my favorite pattern from this whole collection. It really is vibrant and uh, it could go either way. It could be for a modern card or something like this is maybe boho style or definitely you could use it in a vintage card. So it is very flexible. Okay, so here is that first page you'll see when you flip. And I've got a second portion to add, just a little bit of extra detail. I'm gonna put that in the center here and get that nice stripey border. I love how graphic that is. It's just a very strong pattern. And here is a little bar fly that I cut. I was gonna put it on the front of the card, but I was worried that it would be a little bit too much shiny. So I thought maybe I could just tuck it in here. So I'll put this on with a little bit of Tombow and I wanna just be uh, sure to keep this so that it doesn't squeeze out. Like use the least amount you can to get it to stick because you don't wanna seal up this card. And you get one shot with these because they're so detailed that all that glue would squeeze out pretty easily. I think it looks really nice here. And I'll just go ahead and press that down until I get a good contact. It should set up pretty quickly. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's just on there really well so that it doesn't become damaged when the card is open. Okay, so here is my first set of inside pages. And like I said, I really wanted to add a pocket here, but I was like, Ginny, why are you like this? Don't do that, this is a card. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this so you can see how thick it is getting now. I just love a big chunky project. So I'll open this to the front and I think it will be easiest to work on if I have it fully open. That way my surface is flat. I'm just going to add this here. That is going to be my base layer. I have another one just similar to this side so that I have a nice consistent look throughout. That also really helped me to utilize this paper. So I've got uh, quite a lot of solid color cardstock invested in this, but only uh, four sheets of pattern paper. And that includes the cut apart sheet where I got the tag. So here's that bottom layer. I just wanted to show you, I put a little scrap of the cardstock so that I could keep the busy paper pattern separate. And that helps it from looking too crazy. So there's the bottom of that portion. Here is my 
doily. This is the mandala. I don't know how to say that right. Uh, from Bo Bunny. And I picked this specifically because it had some chunkier edges to it. It wasn't fussy and detailed and little. I was worried that would get lost under the uh, layers I'm going to add on top and not show up as nicely over the pattern paper. So what I want to do is place this pretty well in the middle and you'll see I would normally have put a spacer between this layer and this layer, but I wanted this doily specifically and I didn't want it to hang off the edges and become fragile. So I picked this one and I'm just going to have a flat surface to glue it on. So I'll add my Tombow around here and then a little bit on the outside edge so that I can keep it secured. So one shot on this doily again, because you don't want that glue to squeeze through those fine details and make sure that you press it well enough to get a good contact. So here's the tag and I picked this because it had the most contrast and I think the sentiment on top is really sweet. So I cut this out and then I added the eyelid on top just to have a little extra detail and here's some twine. So I picked that up from really reasonable ribbon and it's just the perfect width to loop around and I put my backing up on these foam spacers so that I could build some dimension because remember I don't have any under this layer so I can add some here. I'm going to add that kind of right in the middle because I wanted to include two flower arrangement I've got to leave room. So here is my first and larger arrangement of flowers. So I created all of these mostly with scraps that were on my desk and for my first flower here I chose this beautiful charcoal gray and I think it works so well with that dark black in the background. It gives a depth of color so it's still working as an anchor flower. It's large in the middle and it has the most contrast of color but it is really not so dark that you lose the details. And then I finished the inside with some stamens. These are from Really Reasonable Ribbon. I'll link that down in the description. Here are more flowers. These are the poinsettia uh, dyes that I use quite often and I went ahead and chose a lighter gray just so I can have some variation of color and then I finished off the arrangement on the ends with white flowers and they are the same dye as the larger one just the smaller of the nested set. These came from Little Birdie Crafts. I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head but I'll drop that link in the description as well. I know they are having a sale right now, so if you already have stuff in your cart, I would recommend adding this specific die. I don't have all of them, but I do like the ones I do have, and this one I have found works well for shaped flowers or for just layering flowers for sweet and simple cards. So I recommend getting that if you're already shopping or go check them out anyway, because they have a lot of good deals. So I went ahead and added my usual loopy twine bows and some die cut foliage. And then here on the outside edge, I put a bow of wrinkled ribbon, just kind of filling in that corner. And it's gonna go right here. What I wanna do first is determine where I want my butterfly. Okay, so here is the butterfly for my cover. And this one is from Cherryland Designs. It's just a little smaller and it seemed a little bit less shiny. So I thought the scale would work a little better. Um, I don't know that they're still available, but whatever butterfly dye you have will work great for this. So I think whatever you have will be perfect. And I'm just gonna go ahead and position that here so I know I'm leaving the right amount of room. That really helps to fill in this corner. I'll just go ahead and poof up my petals a little so I have all that nice dimension. You have a second smaller arrangement with all the same dyes and loopy bows and ribbon. So that's gonna go here on the corner. And what I wanna do first is include a couple of little butterfly charms so that I can hide the cut edges of my string underneath those flowers. Okay, last thing I wanna bring in just to add a little sparkle and detail are my favorite marshmallowy colored sequins. And because I like to work in threes, I think I'm just going to put one on top of the tag and then two on the base. That way there's a nice flow for them. And I'll just add those with my Tombow. 
So that's it for my trifold card today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you leave me a big thumbs up and a comment and let me know what your summer crafting plans are. If you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. And remember, you can check in the description for links to all our social media sites. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.